All right, everybody, hello. Uh, this is Harassis, uh, world hello. And today I am honored to chair this panel and to be a moderator of this panel with members of Ukrainian parliament. Unfortunately, it's under due to a very, very difficult situation. Nine days ago, our country and all of our lives have changed dramatically. We're under attack, millions of people being displaced, thousands are dead already. Our city is being under attack daily. So today, it's not about questions. Today, it's about statements. So today, I am honored, and we will actually also skip the introductions, which is very unusual. To, usually, at Horizons, we discuss a lot of big ideas. Today, we're going to discuss something very, very different. I'm going to start with our uh, panelist, uh, Dmitry, your word, two words about who you are, your title, what you do for Ukraine, and please... Go ahead. Oh, you mean me? Yes, Mitro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, just in two words, I'm uh, Dimitro Nataluka. Uh, I am a member of parliament. Uh, I'm uh, the chairman of the Economic Affairs Committee. Um, and uh, what I do for parliament, well, yesterday we voted uh, a law on the nationalization of um, uh, Russian property on the territory of Ukraine. And that is something that our committee uh, worked on as well. So in two words, that, that's it. Thank you. So please make a statement. What's happening in the country right now? What can people around the world remember? People around the world will see the thousands of people will see this around the world at a very high level of corporate government levels. Please speak to them. Um, all right. So, uh, guys, uh, the condemnation of, of brutal Russia's attack on, on, on Ukraine has received the international response for uh, and it was far wider than just political reaction of most governments. Uh, big businesses, international networks, and private corporations have adjoined uh, the collective condemning response and have broken their business contracts and supply chains to Russia. Uh, so by the end of yesterday, the 3rd of March, over 40 international companies and corporations announced of closing their business with Russia. Uh, we have the Aircop, Airbus, Boeing, or Embraer in the aviation industry, for instance, uh, BMW, Cherry, Citroën, uh, Ford, Geely, Honda, Hyundai, Jaguar, Harley Davidson, uh, Nissan, Skoda, Toyota, Lexus, and other uh, companies in the car industry. Uh, we have Amexpress, Mastercard, Visa, PayPal in the payment systems, uh, oil and gas. Uh, we have BP, Exxon Mobil, Shell. We have Apple, Dell, Google, Intel, HP, Nokia, Samsung, SAP in mobiles, computers, and th that is just to name the few. Uh, the full list of all the companies has been submitted to the chairman of Horasis for further circulation. The areas are ranging from high tech to closing industry, fashion houses and cinematography. Uh, famous people like Richard Branson, Elon Musk, St Stephen King and many more stand with Ukraine these days. And uh, as our president said yesterday, an apocalypse, uh, an apocalypse uh, has already happened. Ukraine is a, a palisade between civilization and dehumanization. And the Russians even do not care about their wounded soldiers. They shoot them down while withdrawing. Uh, and um, that is uh, simply an outrageous uh, annihilation of humanity. We passionately call you to progressive and uh, prosperous businesses to follow the example of your colleagues and to take an active stance uh, on the side of protecting humanity. The globe needs to know its intolerance to humiliation uh, and onslaught, which is happening these days in Ukraine. So please stand up and raise your voice. Let's get socially responsible. Uh, let's get, get strong and vocal on human atrocity and uh, we count on your support. Thank you very much, Mitro. Thank you. Of course, uh, we need all the help we can get right now. We need help right now of all the other types. Right now, I would like to go to uh, our next speaker, Evgenia, you, word to you. Please, again, your title, your name, what you do for our country, and please make a statement. Hello, uh, my name is Yevhenia. I'm a member of parliament and deputy uh, chair of the Committee on Humanitarian and Informational Politics. And I would like to uh, raise attention to the uh, upcoming humanitarian uh, catastrophe uh, that could happen in Ukraine and already happening in some of the regions which are encircled by Russian troops. Um, in some of the regions, uh, people uh, are staying in the basements, in the bomb shelters, for um, four or five days without uh, electricity, um, without uh, access to food, um, uh, with uh, small children. Um, there are women who are pregnant and um, uh, with very, very 
uh, young children. Um, so we desperately need green corridors. Um, our team negotiated with um, um, Russians to have these green corridors to the cities which are uh, have been bombed um, uh, heavily lately. It's Kharkiv, it's uh, Kherson, it's Sumy. Uh, it's uh, part of the Kiev Oblast, uh, which is to the north uh, from the capital. But right now, we do not have the official stay, uh, start of the um, humanitarian corridors, which is very dangerous because um, we don't know what's happening in some of the cities. For example, in Volnovakha, people could not uh, even you know, send a signal because there is no, uh, no mobile, uh, no... Um, um, it, it's it's impossible uh, possible to charge the phone and uh, even to give uh, to give a signal also in uh, some of the cities for example Kherson uh, the um, um, Russian troops do not let uh, our humanitarian aid w- which was collected in other regions of Ukraine to enter the city and um, they're try- trying to uh, bribe I would say it's, it's bribe um, locals uh, giving them uh, Russian humanitarian uh, aid which was taken in uh, in other um, uh, shops uh, where they passed and uh, just robbed them and packed it and try now to give uh, to um, uh, to Ukrainians who are encircled in the cities. Uh, so we uh, urge uh, also the business of the world. If you want to help, we have uh, headquarters which are coordinated uh, of uh, our uh, with our vice prime minister, uh, vice prime minister on uh, year integration. If you want to help, you can also uh, send us signal, send us contact, and uh, to uh, to help. But it's very also important to have a no fly zone at least um, at the green corridors because we do not believe Russians they can. Bomb Bomb, even the green corridors and um, uh, and the people who are there and trying to leave. Also, we sent numerous letters uh, and statements to Red Cross. We are ready, Red Cross, to come to the country and um, to help with humanitarian um, aid. Thank you. Thank you very much, Evgenia. A couple of things. Number one, please, uh, as uh, as we continue, put all of the information into the group chat. We have a lot of listeners right now, and we have a, even more around the world. So please, all the information, where can people donate and how they can help, right in the chat right now. Also, 100% agree with you. No fly zone is critical right now. Kiev is being bombarded right now all day long. Uh, today, I'm in Kiev myself. So I am uh, very grateful to you for all your work you're doing. And now I want to get to Alona. Alona, thank you. Alona worked tirelessly over the last several days uh, to help us put together this panel to provide the world with the news out of Ukraine and exactly what we need. I want a word to you, who you are, what you do for our country, and please make a statement. Uh, dear colleagues, do you hear me? Do you see me? Yes, yes, everything's good. Uh, my name is Olena Khomenko. I'm the member of uh, Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine, the uh, member of Committee on uh, Foreign Affairs. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to uh, participate in this event. Um, we would like to um, call on uh, business communities uh, to uh, impose uh, international reaction and sanctions. Uh, we prize the overwhelming, coordinated and consolidated response of our Western partners, USA, uh, United Kingdom, Canada, European Union and individual member states and uh, Eastern friends like Japan and South Korea to hit Russia with really hellish sanctions of unprecedented nature, which were imposed on Russia. This is the it is a realm where U.S. has definitely taken the lead and other countries uh, followed the suit. A bold decision of the Uni- uh, European Union to supply defenses weapons to, to, the, to a third country, which has an international armed conflict, has been taken for the first time in history. Germany has changed its mind and dared to supply Ukraine with defensive weapons. Swift restrictions have been applied to measure Russian banks. Vast part of Russian assets abroad has been frozen. Uh, EU and US have closed their airspace to Russian aviation. European ports deny access to Russian vessels. These measures are kept in rolling, far more to see. Yet even these actions have already brought these fruits. Russian economy sunk with its currency depreciation of more than 30%. Inflation is expected at a level of 30-40%. 
And uh, this has already led to bankruptcy of Nord Stream 2 operator and S2 AG. Uh, other companies are expected to follow the suit of, uh, in the foreseeable future. National wealth of Russia has uh, shrunk almost uh, twofold, but this also not sobered Russian political leadership up. Uh, what else might, might be done? Total embargo on exports of Russian oil and gas is a logical further step. As geopolitical implications, I Iran has already stated that it is ready to get back to negotiations over nuclear deal in exchange of a possibility to export its oil and gas to Western clients instead, instead of Russia. This could be expert, uh, explored further. Regretting, however, this is sanctions flash mob does not include so far countries of Latin America, India, China, or, or Arab countries. We appeal here to the business representatives of these countries and regions to take up a brave step in this direction. We need to show a solidarity here, similar, similar to those seen on voting for the above mentioned resolution on the Russian aggression on Ukraine. You will not be left untouched. The, uh, possible nuclear catastrophe in Europe will be left all, all over the globe. Thank you, dear colleagues. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank, you very, thank you very much for that passion. And yes, uh, this morning, if those of you don't know, our nuclear power station were attacked in Zaporozhye, which has six reactors. So those of you who don't know, Chernobyl accident was only one reactor. So those of you who don't understand the danger of that. So now with that, Vadim, I'm passing on to you. Please tell us who you are. Tell uh, obviously what you do for our country and please make a statement. Vadim? We cannot hear you, Vadim. We cannot hear you, Vadim. All right, uh, Vadim, unmute yourself. You're muted. All right, so let me go right now. What I, uh, can you hear, Vadim? No, we don't hear you, Vadim. Yes. All right, so let me jump to Dmitro right now. Uh, Dmitro, back to you. And Dmitro, can you give uh, our listeners right now around the world uh, the situation around the country on the military side, if you can? Um, well, I'm not that kind of a military guy. Uh, but uh, uh, one thing I know for sure, um, we need a no-fly zone, and that is like 100% uh, positive. And uh, I hope that today's talks in NATO uh, would be concerned mostly about that, because as you might observe now, the war is being fought uh, mainly on air. The war is being fought with heavy machinery, with artillery, with uh, aviation, um, and uh, it, Ukraine needs this kind of support and uh, the, the close is the, the sky uh, so that uh, we um, we don't have any more cas casualties of the civil um, of the civil population of, of children of people who are not competent of uh, innocent Ukrainians. So um, f for us, like the main military aspect is this one. Thank you. Vadim, are you back with us? Can you speak up? Uh, unfortunately. Yeah, you, we do not hear you, unfortunately. Uh, I'll keep trying. Please keep trying. Uh, let me go to, uh, again, back to Evgenia. Evgenia, you mentioned in your comments Red Cross. Uh, obviously, one of the things we saw from, um, I believe, Irina, uh, she asked for Red Cross to come to Ukraine immediately because of the crisis with the casualties on the Russian side, which is now near 9,500 young men who are simply dying for no reason on our soil. Can you speak about Red Cross and what they can do there? Well, um, Red Cross responded that they can uh, come in and uh, do their um, uh, job with um, uh, sending humanitarian aid and um, uh, being together with people who are evacuating from uh, the heavily shelled and bombed regions. But um, Russians do not stop uh, the fire. They uh, they shell and bomb uh, civilians. I'm sorry to say, but we have already 24 children that are dead um, um, uh, since the beginning of of this uh, invasion of this uh, war. And um, without no fly zone, um, uh, without uh, giving us um, um, uh, things, uh, you know, the the um, um, what how we can uh, save ourselves from the air. 
um, um, planes, uh, um, we cannot um, be sure that uh, the number of civilians who are dying uh, every day will not uh, grow up. So we will be working together with Red Cross, with other humanitarian organizations as soon as Russians stop bombing. Uh, because, for example, in the city of Volnovakha, which is very close to uh, to um, uh, this uh, demarcation line um, between uh, occupied territories of uh, Donbass, people uh, cannot uh, get out. Uh, the the um, National Guard and um, um, our authorities Uh, they uh, try to evacuate people, but we cannot, for example, send buses um, with people because of, uh, even the road and, um, and, and the bridge uh, is uh, being shut. Uh, so as soon as Russians stop bombing and shelling, we are ready, together with Red Cross, Uh, together with our uh, militaries who will be in, um, you know, together with, with these buses, uh, will be able to uh, first evacuate uh, people, especially women and kids. And also we need to bring uh, the supplies because what they do, they encircle the cities um, and not um, giving the, um, 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 even the opportunity of the aid, which is already collected, uh, to be passed um, uh, into the uh, uh, into the cities also uh, we have um, a problem um, uh, not only uh, with Ukrainians who are suffering from this but also with foreigners for example foreign students as in uh, Kharkiv as I know there are more one, uh, than 1,000 of foreign students there and uh, already in uh, students Evgenia, I, I'm sorry I, I need to interrupt because we are either joining but I work with many students around Ukraine completely agree with you we need a lot of help uh, Alessa thank you for rejoining us uh, Uh, Lisa, please uh, uh, tell us who you are, what you do for our country, make a statement. Maria, great to see you as well. We'll come back to you in one second. Lisa, you are. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, everyone who is on this call and ready to hear the story of Ukraine as it is happening and as it is being written right now. My name is Lisa Vasilenko. I'm a member of parliament from a Holos party, an opposition party, but today it doesn't even matter what party who is from, because we all stand united for Ukraine and we all stand united with the Ukrainian people and shoulder to shoulder with the Ukrainian soldiers. Why? Because Russia has attacked Ukraine on all different levels. My colleagues have talked about uh, the economic attacks. My colleagues have talked about the blatant attacks on civilians, on school children, on kindergartners, on, uh, on hospitals and maternity wards. But the other very dangerous attack that is happening as we speak is on critical infrastructure. What is critical infrastructure in Ukraine? This is nuclear power stations. Ukraine's energy mix is made up 52% of nuclear energy. And uh, the five nuclear power stations that we have, they amount to tens of times bigger damage, risk of bigger damage than Chernobyl ever was. Today at 2 a.m., Russia has started shooting missiles at uh, the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. The Zaporizhia nuclear plant, power plant is the biggest in Ukraine and the third biggest in Europe. That's right, in all of Europe. It has five, six nuclear reactors. Six nuclear reactors means that if anything goes wrong on that nuclear power plant. It will be a disaster six times as big as Chernobyl, because Chernobyl, the Chernobyl you all remember in 1986, was one nuclear reactor. This is six nuclear reactors we are talking about. To have that power station now under Russian control means that at any point, the crazed psychotic leader, Vladimir Putin, can give an order and something can go wrong on that power station. Somebody can press the wrong button. And then the world will be facing a nuclear disaster of a magnitude never seen before. And why Ukrainians call for a no-fly zone so hysterically and so panically and all the time in all uh, the media outlets and social media that we get? 
because we care not just for the lives of the 44 million Ukrainians, which are at stake here, but we also care for the livelihood of humanity as a whole, because nuclear disaster doesn't hit just one country. Nuclear disaster hits the whole world. When Chernobyl happened in 1986, the nuclear cloud which went up went as far out as Australia and New Zealand, and people were getting affected there. So the fact that the world is just standing by watching as Russia is bombing Ukraine in all aspects, not differentiating between military targets, civilian targets, and nuclear power stations, it means that the whole of humanity's livelihood could be at stake right now. And this is this from the international community, not introducing the no-fly zone over Ukraine, is actually a complete irresponsibility towards their own people. The Americans out there, the British, the French, the Germans, all of these people are now at danger of being under nuclear threat and under extinction, basically under death, to put it clearly, because their governments are fearing a very, very remote risk of Russia sending their, their aviation over to, to those countries. Russia will not say send their aviation over to uh, the NATO allies. Do you know why? Because Russia's aviation uh, is getting smaller and smaller in number. Every, as Ukraine, every, day, every day. Every day. Every single day is getting smaller and smaller. Plus, every Russia is not smaller. going to spread themselves. I'm finishing. I'm finishing just sure. two more sentences. So Russia is not going to spread themselves thin by attacking any NATO member. Because Russia has one goal and one goal only, to uh, destroy Ukraine and erase it off of the face of the earth. And they are going to concentrate on that. But as the allies watch, the, the world can be at extinction. And this is a real threat. And this is irresponsibility towards all of your people and towards all of the Americans and all other nationalities out there. So please mind that. Lisa, thank you so much. Uh, it is so powerful what you have said, and it's way beyond politics. I'm very apolitical. I'm an American who was born in Kiev. I was actually here when the Chernobyl blew up, uh, and I cannot agree with you more. No fly zone is must to have for all of the world, for all of humanity. Uh, Maria, moving on to you. It's great to see you. You and I have not seen each other for a couple of years. We met in Brussels in the European Parliament. As you've been a great host there for us. Uh, please speak up. Uh, please tell us what you do, who you are for our country, and uh, please make a statement. Maria, you muted. Uh, thank you very much. It's a big honor. Uh, thank you, Henry, for this brief introduction. I hope my net is uh, stable. You, I'll be as, as brief as possible. Uh, my name is Maria Mensov. I represent the constituency, constituency in the very heart of Kharkiv, which was severely bombed by the missiles and the cassette bombs, which are forbidden by all forms of international law in, in times of war. Uh, they were targeting civilian uh, objects like regional uh, children hospital, don don blood donor center, regional administration, civilian houses, block houses, um, etc. And randomly targeting um, volunteers who are trying to deliver water, food and medicine across the city. Uh, I uh, also call uh, not only for uh, the matter of um, notion of the fly zone uh, and uh, the, regardless how difficult it is, we are losing uh, people every day. It's not only about Kharkiv, it's about uh, other cities which are suffering a lot like Chernigiv, we had dozens of that yesterday uh, and of course we understand that it has to be a, a complex, a, a complex um, simultaneous decision of all. We call on the NATO member states to consider that it has been imposed before and can be done again. If not, a full geographic territory of Ukraine can be also discussed some parts with those location of the nuclear power plants of those cities which are severely targeted and are being in circle of the Russian army now if not if not Ukraine if not NATO fly zone let's well let's talk in the reality give us please more weapons in terms of defending our sky give us more capabilities and jets which were promised and now these promises are taken away uh, so easily we have all we have um guys who are working in in the air where they've been called um 
airspace uh, uh, angels, no one knows exact names, but everyone are praying for them. One person hit dozens of this of these jets from Russia, and this is uh, this is an example of Kharkiv. Why I'm giving it because we stand firm on the ground. We uh, got we managed to get rid of them on the ground, but we can't deal with this sky defense. It's it's a big lack of defense, and we are in highly need of it. Also, I call on our international partners also American partisans across Europe with regards to the work of the International Red Cross. Their mission is to protect civilians. For uh, several days, many people are hiding in basements and they can't leave it because there is no safety on the streets. We're doing our best. Regional administrations are engaged. But unfortunately, up until now, from the from the last peace talks yesterday, there is no exact green corridors in neither of the cities. We are so much uh, waiting for that. This is something we can um, supervise uh, in, in the regions with the help of the uh, international society and move on with the battle on the ground. But this, this is very important. No fly zone, more jets as promised, and the green corridors. This is all we need right now. All the rest will be done by Ukrainian Army Society Intelligence. Thank you. Maria, Maria thank you. As you know, I've been a big patriot of Ukraine for many, many years. And uh, Ukraine is showing the world of what they made of. Uh, our fighters uh, shut down, over, I believe, with 31 now Russian air. 31 Russian aircraft. It is unbelievable. The Kharkiv, the beautiful city, I've been visited dozens of times. It is, uh, it's been absolutely ruined right now. It is just, it, it's just a shame. Historic shame is it's just humanity. So, uh, Vadim, are you back with us? I hope your connection is back, Vadim. Uh, please, um, uh, again, can you speak up? Can you hear me? Oh, can great. Now we can hear you. Thank you, Vadim. Uh, please tell oh, us excellent. who you are, what you do for our country, and please make a statement. I'm Vadim Halaychuk, I'm a member of parliament and I'm a deputy chair in the European Integration Committee. And this is what I want to speak about. Uh, as uh, those of you who are following Ukraine probably uh, know, we had, the president of Ukraine had submitted an application uh, to join the European Union and we called on our European colleagues to uh, uh, deliver on that application as soon as possible. Ukraine had been getting ready for joining the EU for the past, uh, I'd say, 20 years. And in the recent two, two and a half years, uh, a lot has been done in order to bring Ukraine very close to being able to join the European Union in terms of Ukraine's legislation, the standards that are used here by Ukrainian businesses, by uh, especially those that are exporting into the EU, at this point in time, I'm sure that Ukraine is much better prepared than some of the Eastern European countries that were joining the EU uh, back in uh, 2004, 2008, in, in those years. Uh, we therefore would ask everyone who has uh, any possibility to put pressure, political pressure, on uh, their governments in Europe because the uh, actual joining uh, the European, the, the issue of joining the European Union is the uh, issue that has resulted in, uh, uh, in the member states. Uh, this is a very strong political statement from the uh, European Parliament that Ukraine uh, deserved the candidate status and mm -hmm. that we need to, that European Union will start negotiations with Ukraine right away. Uh, however, we need to do that now on the national level. So all of you who have, uh, who have the uh, uh, opportunities, who have uh, the, the ways of putting sufficient pressure on your governments, uh, we have won, Ukrainians uh, have won uh, the public opinion polls in, in Europe. Uh, we see a very positive, uh, very positive digits in terms of support for Ukraine joining the European Union, and we need to build up. Uh, the momentum on this, and therefore this is this is something that will definitely help us a lot politically. Uh, my colleagues have uh, have already uh, voiced our biggest concerns, our biggest needs. Uh, I can only add to that that uh, we understand the issues that the world has with uh, economy, with uh, energy security, and. Uh, and, with and energy independent, I want to add energy independence. Security and one needs to become independence, independent. Independence. Uh, but, however, this is a very crucial moment. It has it has to be made very clear that. But, but Jim, I think that I, 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 
I honestly, uh, I was introduced to President Zelensky. Was he's part of Quartal 2014? He motivated the hell out of me as a, as a, as a, at the time as an artist. Today, he became a hero for me. His ask and his ability to demand us joining European Union, I 100% support, and I believe every European country of harasses here from Europe must vote for Joe Ukraine to join EU. And thank you very much for your work. Now I want to, we've got to be wrapping it up, unfortunately, due to time. I'm going to give everybody about 30 seconds to 40 seconds for a final statement to our global audience. Remember, everybody around the world are listening to us right now, and I'll wrap it up after everybody's done. We're going to start, we're going to go back, and we're going to start with Mitro. Mitro, word to you, please. Dmitry, your phone is muted, or you're muted. Yeah, thank Please you very ahead. much. You need to understand, yeah, this is not about Ukraine and Russia. This is about the whole world. This is about a war of barbarism uh, and, and civilization, and we're on the civilization side. So uh, you need to join us. You need to, to ban the products, ban the trade, ban the access to ports, ban access to, uh, to, to your um, uh, airports, anything. And you need to introduce a no-fly zone uh, over Ukraine so that we can stop Putin because he's not stopping there. He will further attack all the European countries like Baltic states and, and, uh, and others. You need to understand that Russia today has become a terrorist state. And unfortunately, um, everybody who supports Russia uh, is supporting terrorism because they are bombing innocent civilians, they are bombing children, they are bombing uh, absolutely um, uh, non-militant um, uh, sites and, and cities and villages. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. I'm going to go to Evgenia. Evgenia, final word to you. We've got 30 to 45 seconds. Evgenia, you're muted. Yes, I agree with Metro that uh, it's not about uh, um, a war of uh, Russia and Ukraine. Russia is fighting the whole civilized world. But right now, only Ukraine is fighting back for all the countries uh, in, in the West, for all the countries who want... Uh, to have a democracy, to have a rule of law, uh, uh, to have a peaceful life. So please, you have help us if you want uh, to uh, the world to be the place to leave our ch children. Thank you. Thank you. Alona, to you, please, 30 to 45 seconds, final word. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Please. Uh, dear colleagues, we have uh, this request this uh, to, to you. Uh, we need no no fly zone over Ukraine. Please support us. Please help. Thank you. Lisa, to you, please. Ukraine is asking the no-fly zone not uh, as a victim, but as a partner and as an ally. We need that no-fly zone to make sure that Europe and the world is kept as a secure place. So the one wish, if you'd ask me, what is the one thing that you want granted from, from the international community right now, it would be the no-fly zone. It is a definite priority. Keep our skies safe for the sake of our children and your children wherever you are in the world. Thank you very much. Maria, to you. Colleagues, uh, we are facing deaths and uh, wounded people every day. We really want this to stop. Ukraine is a peaceful country. We haven't started this war, but we want to be the ones who end this war together with your support. Please, 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 no fly zone over Ukraine. Hashtag everywhere and everywhere you can reach out. I've just met uh, numerous guys from all over the world, uh, from Mexico, Israel, uh, Baltic states, US, um, Argentina, and across the, uh, Europe who are serving in International Legion uh, here in Ukraine. Uh, a huge support is introduced by international community. Your soldiers are in Ukraine to defend us. Thank you for that. But please, let's keep Keep them safe and let's use their power on the ground. No fly zone. Please support us. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Vadim. Go ahead, Vadim. We don't hear you, Vadim. We don't hear you again. Uh, something's going wrong with technical, but uh, as we don't hear what you right now, uh, I want to first and foremost, as we're wrapping this up, I want to thank all of you members of my panel for all of the work you've been doing in Ukraine, because I've been in Ukraine since 1996. What's happening now prior to the war, it was before the war, it was before and after time now, and what you're doing now is simply heroic for this country. But I want to address our audience now. This war will be over and will be over soon. Ukraine will be victorious. We, my ask of you, this is what I can do for my country, for Ukraine, the country where I was born, the country where I live now, the country that I love. 
is for you to be ready, for you to start now, to do your research, to do your operational studies, to prepare capital, prepare to become strategic partners for our country, to prepare to send your know-how to our country, to prepare to do everything possible to rebuild the country as an example to the world of what Ukraine can do for the world and what we can do for the world as Ukrainians. Thank you all so much. And Frank, I want to thank Harassis for this opportunity at the last moment to put us together. Alona, thank you for all of your work you've done the last couple of days. We do, every one of us do what they can in order to stop this war, in order to stop this aggression, in order to stop killings of innocent civilians. We want to thank you all, and we're going to stay with you. And trust me, you know, many of you know me. You know me as part of Harassis' family. You know me. You've seen me. I am not going to stop. I make you a personal promise. I'll commit my professional career, the rest of it, to make Ukraine as prosperous as it possibly can be and one of the best countries in the world. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. Slava Ukraine. Heroes Slava. Heroes Slava. Thank you.